Hello everyone, I am Siri the Pixel Biologist and we are here for another niche adventure. We have had many hundreds of niche tales on our Pixel Biology channel and I am so excited to bring to all of you a special journey that actually my patrons helped me to vote on so that we could try to make an exciting new expedition into one of my all-time favorite games. So, my friends, I present to all of you the Zadari tribe, who will be focusing on a Stampede and Ice Age special event. I will explain some of the guidelines for the tribe really quickly, and then we will be moving into our very first glimpse of who may belong in the Zadari herd. But if you guys ever want to check in on the guidelines, I will permanently link them in these episodes in the video description, so you can check them out there. Any rule tweaks or gameplay that we alter as we go along and realize we want to add a little bit more to their culture or change some of the rules we originally set for ourselves will be tweaked in that Google document as well. And you will also want to check out the niche wiki ruled over by our wonderful Professor Callium, a fantastic patron of many years now, who makes sure that we have some of the most fascinating niche statistics available. In the future, I will not be repeating these guidelines unless it is relevant to gameplay, so I'll go through them very quickly to explain why our Zadari tribe is going to be so exciting, especially with their habit of stampedes! <laughs> So my friends, the, Zadar the Zadaris are a tribe whose instincts say that only a horned or antlered protector can guard them from predators. So if we lack a horned member in the tribe, they will live in constant fear and if a large predator, such as the Berina, show up, then they will stampede. When the tribe is whipped into a frenzy of fear and they stampede, then they will randomly dash to an island and what members go with us will be randomly determined as well. You guys don't need to worry, I will be handling that part if we ever do end up in a stampede behind the scenes, so you don't need to see me have to go through and do all of the picking from the random generators. There will simply be a cloud of dust, and when that dust settles, we will find ourselves on a new island with the survivors. The Zadari tribe are based off of zebra, so they are also very obsessed with stripes, which we'll get into with their tribe culture in just a second but they also follow the rainy and dry seasons to mimic the way that zebra go through great migrations in Africa in the real world. So the Zadari tribe will follow the rainy and dry seasons and stay on dry islands such as savannas and rainy islands such as jungles for different portions of the year. Basically, a season will last about 25 days. We might change that length of time depending on what it feels like when we start doing gameplay. Or a season will last until the entire island is stripped of all of the non-regrowing grass as a way of saying that the herd has grazed all that was available on that island. When it is the end of a rainy or dry season, we will have to leave that island and journey to a rainy or dry island, meaning that we'll have to alternate basically between the savanna islands when it is the dry season and the jungle islands when it is the wet season. As we are going through the other islands looking for the right type of island, we will also just move through other islands and say that we cannot breed on those islands because the food is not suitable for the Zadari diet. There is also a chance, my friends, as we shift along the rainy and dry seasons, that an ice age might occur. If we are wandering through the islands and find a island that has a port to an ice island, there will be a one in three chance that an ice age will take over the world and the Zadari tribe will be forced onto an ice island for anywhere between 25 to 50 days. Again, all of these numbers in the random generators I am listing off to you, I will handle behind the scenes. You can just sit back and enjoy the story, but I am explaining it to you up front so that you know the guidelines for our adventure. And when we are forced onto a ice island for the ice age, they have to stay there for the predetermined amount of days before the ice age will end and they can resume their migration between the dry and rainy season islands. 
So basically, the special characteristics that will guide our guidelines for this series will be the fact that the herd will scatter in a stampede if they do not have a horned member or antlered member of the tribe to fight predators. One of the rules of this tribe is that if you are born with horns or antlers, you must defend the tribe. So if we do end up having a Berina or another predator show up and we have a horned Nishling, then they must devote what remains of their life, which might be very brief in this case, to defeating that predator. And if they fall in the line of duty and there are no more horned animals or antlered animals in the whole tribe to try to fight this predator, then the tribe will panic stampede, the dust will settle, and we'll be on a new island with a random selection of whatever tribe members were currently available. Moving between the different islands for the rainy and dry season, or an ice age, will be an extra way to kind of have that migration story and to have some development as we can wander from island to island looking for the correct areas. Also, we do have breeding limitations on what we can put into the mutation menu for each island. When we are on Savannah Islands, then that is the time when the Zadari are aware they must protect themselves. Defensive and offensive mutations can only be put into the mutation menu while on a dry season on a Savannah Island. If we are on a rainy island, a jungle or mixed jungle island, then that is a time of food and abundance when we can put collecting and cosmetic mutations into the mutation menu. If we end up stuck on an ice age island, then we, all bets are off, we just need to survive and any mutations are allowed into the mutation menu. If we end up on other islands that are not savanna, not jungle, not mixed jungle, not ice age, and not a whale island, then we cannot breed with some special exceptions that will be linked into the rules and you don't need to worry about right now. But there are all the fancy rules, my friends, so let me tell you a little bit more about the Zadari very quickly. They are based off of the idea of breeding up rainbow zebras, basically, which I am extremely excited about. And in that name of uh, following along the zebra mentality, they will be herbivores. The only meat they can eat are from defeated predators to represent an increase of power to the herd. And they also eat, in quotations, the grass by collecting every Every bit of it they can find. This is to represent when they overgraze an island and need to move from season to season. And among the tribal culture, which I know a lot of you guys will be very interested in, this is what the tribe culture of the Zadari is normally like. They really have a strong sense of leadership with the horned ones being the ones who protect the tribe and also have the pressure and the expectation of laying down their lives to fight off any of the predators who might come and attack the tribe. The horned one with the most attack will be the leader until their death. When leaving an island by migration, the horned one with the most attack will choose some of their family and some of the strongest and best suited of the tribe to go forward as the vanguard of the great migration. It will be assumed that the rest of the tribe will join up at some point, though in the game this cannot happen. We will not be treating the great migrations as uh, deep tragedies where families are torn apart. Instead, it will just be seen as one group going ahead of the others, and eventually they'll catch up. They never will, but, you know, that's what the Zadaris think, at least. For the Zadaris, their most desired mate would be a horned, striped mate of either gender. The most dramatic, the more dramatic the stripes style and color, the more attractive the Zadari are. The larger the antlers of the horns, the better. Specific colors are less desired than kind of an overall look, so they don't really care what color your horns are or what color your stripes are. They just want you to look really cool and dramatic. And a least desired mate would be a Zadari who lacks any horns, stripes, or spots. Any markings at all would be considered very unattractive. And whatever their face looks like, any of those characteristics are not nearly as important as having those protective horns and some lovely stripes or spots. And the only thing that might be an exception is if they are an exceptionally good food finder. Then they still might find somebody willing to share their lives with them. For courtship, Zadari males or females usually take on one mate, but the tribe believes that multiple mates for the horned ones mean a higher likelihood of safety for the herd. So horned ones, male or females, often have multiple mates. And for personality of the tribe, 
Well, my friends, these Zadari are going to be very vain and very obsessed with appearances in some ways, but they are easily frightened by outsiders and will always come together in times of trouble. In peaceful times, they obsess about their stripes and beauty, but in busy times, they rely and support on one another. And finally, to wrap all of this long rambling up, we do have some tribe goals. These goals are just vague ideas of where the tribe may try to go from here, and they might give us some great stories to try to direct all of our adventures towards. Any of these tribe goals, or none of them may happen, they will just help us guide the story in between all of the other roleplay aspects that will come to life. So, one of the tribe goals may be to find the legendary Horned One, aka the mega antlers that are hidden away in the Ice Age islands. Another goal may be to meet the Great Phoenix, one of the rumored guardian phoenixes of the Yukir tribe, by experiencing a fire event and rolling a random generator to see if a phoenix appears during then. If a phoenix does appear, then a phoenix will actually come and join our tribe, which would be very exciting. Another potential goal is to have the god Yuki or Lala born into the tribe as a free pass for the Zadari to search out an ice island in an attempt to find the legendary horned one, the Mega Antlers. Another couple of goals that may happen if those ones don't, just trying to survive for a hundred days and see how the Zazari have grown, or defeating six predators on one island to become rulers of the savannah and being allowed to stay on what, that island until the tribe desires to move on. Whew. All right, so that's enough for all of the guidelines and rules. As always, the video description will have a link to the Google document that explains all of this and a link to the wonderful wiki that will hopefully follow this tribe along as we continue to go through generations and all of the stories that emerge from our adventures here. This has been our guideline and rule video so that you can always refer to this if you just kind of need a primer on what the Zadari tribe are all about. And in the next video, we will properly begin the first episode and get a chance to meet the Zadaris and see what they are all about. So if you guys would like to join us for that, do please consider subscribing. If you would, do please leave a like to kind of cheer on a whole bunch of our awesome new zebra based stampede very vain, hopefully really cool Rainbow Zebra tribe members. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious, and I'll see you next time for the beginning of the Zadari's adventure.